Welcome one, welcome all to the Snail Trail 4x4 Podcast. If you like going off-roading in Toyotas, wrenching on Toyotas, camping in Toyotas, and maybe even poking a little bit of fun at Toyotas, then this is the podcast for you guys. I am your host today, Tyler, and sitting here next to me is my esteemed colleague, Mr. JJ the Hydro Jet. JJ, how are you? I'm doing great. You're doing great. Yeah, I'm. You look uh, pretty good today. Thanks. You, you look like you got a lot of sleep compared to the last seven days that I've seen you. I have gotten. <laughs> I last night was one of the first nights that I got a good, decent night's sleep uh, in a uh-huh. while since uh, we have been elbow deep inside of uh, some forerunners. Oh, that sounds interesting <laughs> and kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, now I was gonna. I was gonna say. You know, I don't know why, but you you were just looking really haggard over the last seven days. No offense or anything. But. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was because uh, I was wearing almost the same exact set of clothes because I just didn't want to dirty <laughs> up all my clothes over the last few days. Yeah, I've just pretty much <laughs> dirtied up all my clothes. Uh, yeah, we'll get into that a little bit later mm-hmm. and how that's all going along. But uh, but first, we got to say a huge thank you to all the patrons out there. Uh, we are coming up to the end of the month. Yep. So the end of the month means that the drawing is coming up in the giveaway tier. So if you're on the giveaway tier or higher, you're automatically getting entered entered for a hundred dollar gift card to factor 55 yeah so uh that's gonna be this month next month is that tailgater tire table yes so uh um, that, that thing's pretty cool pretty badass so uh check those out if you haven't already go to patreon.com slash snail trail four by four four x four is what that is and uh sign up for the the giveaway tier and then uh starting next month as well october 1st or 2nd one of those two we're gonna open back up the gift box tier yes that's exciting yes that's gonna be really cool to see uh because the the gift boxes are, are pretty badass as well yeah i'm uh, super stoked with what we're what we were able to achieve mm-hmm. with limited funds for the most part and i'm pretty impressed with us <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i know that uh yeah. for the next box it's going to be even better yes so. yeah it's going to be even better so we'll go over a little bit into end of detail uh either october 3rd's episode or october 7th episode mm-hmm. about the gift boxes and what's in those what you guys can expect yeah. um from those in the gift box tier and then for those not in the gift box tier what you're missing out on and what you're <laughs> going to be signing up for for next time keep an eye open for that uh we have a fun guest coming up october 3rd so make sure you listen to thursday's episode there mm-hmm, uh mm-hmm. next week or this week in this a couple week. days here yeah uh you guys are going to want to talk to him you're going to want to hear his voice you guys are going to know who he is but that's all we're going to say for now so make sure you check out that episode and with that i believe that's all the updates right yeah we've got a l- lot of things going on in this episode <laughs> yeah, so we we, let's jump right over to the campfire discussion all righty let's head right on over to our campfire discussions grab your coffee in the meantime and we'll see you in a couple seconds Welcome back, ladies, gents, and kiddos. Hope you guys had a nice little break there. I did. If you even have a break. I don't get breaks. No. I'm not I don't get a union mandated break unlike some other people around here. Hey, I'm gonna start charging overtime. <laughs> oh, I'd go broke. <laughs> oh man. I'm trying to make it up by by buying a bunch of random stuff for the shop. So it's working. <laughs> okay, good. I'm, I'm glad lo- I can buy your friendship. I'm still loving these chairs too. <laughs> these chairs are awesome. <laughs> Thank you. You know who you are. We yes. still haven't. We're gonna we're 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 gonna keep our promise and keep you anonymous so you don't get other people bugging you for chairs. But uh, thank you. These chairs really are freaking awesome. So. Or possibly in trouble. <laughs> or possibly in trouble. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> another person we need to thank is. Um, uh, Dirtbag. So, oh, yeah? Dirtbag Music. Yes. Yeah, Dirtbag Johnny. Definitely. So, uh, we get our music that you guys hear every episode from him. So, definitely go check out uh, Dirtbag. I believe it's dirtbag.com. I can double confirm that real quick. But uh, go check out the website. He has uh, a bunch of different music. He's got a bunch of different clothing. It's a really cool kind of brand that okay. he's kind of set up and done. It's more like a 
uh, an umbrella brand an umbrella for different company, things. Sure, yeah. Uh, so he's all about the passion of whatever you're doing, and he likes the the podcasts and what we're doing here. So he was like, "Hell yeah, use some of the music." Mm-hmm. Uh, he talked to the bands for us. He's kind of a music manager. Uh, yeah, huge shout out to Dirtbag Johnny for hooking us up with the music. Yeah, definitely, definitely go check him out and go check out the bands there. They're in the show notes, so you guys can look at those. Go listen to them. They're fun. And uh, we have a listener feedback. Oh, yeah. We're going to uh, jump into safety, that. A safety feedback that we're going to throw in here okay. on this episode. Um, rather than waiting for a listener feedback episode, we go over a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is from Joe. And he said, hey, guys, in episode 23, you suggested to a guy to get a plexiglass windshield. Do you remember that? Yes. So uh, we were talking about the guy rolled his rig and he bent his a his a pillar and he wasn't sure how to repair the a okay. pillar so he can put a windshield back in his rig. Yes. So we had recommended one of our recommendations was to get a plexiglass windshield. Okay. Yeah. So he go, he said, "I'm guessing you just threw that out there as a general term for plastic windshield, but I'm going to be a stickler on this point because it would be dangerous to use plexiglass as a windshield, and someone with less experience may think." Well, they said use plexiglass on the show. Okay. So uh, you would want to use a polycarbonate material like Lexan instead of plexiglass. The main safety issue is that plexiglass will shatter Shatters. into big, sharp pieces mm-hmm. that can do more serious damage than not uh, when you, they get hit with a big impact. Or polycarbonate mm-hmm. is resistant to shattering. It will crack and split, but it will stay in one piece. Excellent. So yeah. uh, that's a very good catch because... I I didn't realize I didn't know plexiglass shattered. I thought that it yeah. was shattered resistant, like Lexan is. I know Lexan is shatter resistant, but I didn't realize plexiglass actually shatters. Oh yeah, neither so, did I, and I appreciate you uh, bringing that up. Yeah, so thank you, Joe, mm-hmm. um, and thank you for bringing that up and making sure that we get that corrected for the listeners out there. Because yeah, plexiglass would definitely be a bad choice for a windshield. Then. <laughs> Anything that shatters, that's why <laughs> you know a lot of those are tempered. So does that and, mean my heart is not a good windshield? No. Okay. Is it shattered? It, yeah. Or it sometimes. can get it shattered? Can, it can shatter, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should definitely temper that. <laughs> uh, Jeff Bakken's Atlas is not a good windshield either because no. it shatters apparently. Yeah, Atlases, you can't see through them very well either. <laughs> So, uh, thank you, Joe, for that uh, information, that kind of tip and catching and keeping us honest out there. Yes. Um, So, the next update is why James over here has been looking so haggard for the past seven days, Uh, uh, mainly because we have pretty much finished the second Gen 4 runner, and we did it all in seven days. Yeah. And I wrote a list here of everything that we did... Oh, yeah? And I'm looking at this list, and I'm like, holy fuck, what were we thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I so, don't know. <laughs> in seven days, and this is just going to be a quick update, we'll get into some of the more intricate details of it. Uh, uh, go watch the video. We have a video that's posting here either before this episode or shortly after. Mm-hmm. Um I'm hoping it'll be out tomorrow. So this will oh, be nice. um, on Friday. Yeah. Okay. So this will post Friday. Uh, sorry. This episode that you're listening to will post Monday. The video about what we did to the second gen is coming out three days earlier Friday. Yeah. So uh, here's everything that we did. We swapped a front axle and brakes. We swapped in a rear axle and brakes. Mm-hmm. We swapped in rear shocks. We swapped in a transfer case and did a twin stick mod to it. Yes. We swapped in a hydro ram. Mm Mm-hmm. We swapped wheels and tires. Yep. We put new steering rod ends on the steering setup. We put new rear leaf spring suspension in. We fabricated and installed a new tie rod. We deleted the muffler. (laughs) Yep. We installed a six-channel switch box. Yep. And we installed a twin ARB and onboard air system. Yes. To run the lockers and the airs and everything. that, And that is almost done. That's the last part. I'm waiting on two pieces. Two parts or little hose fittings. They're that big. They cost about a dollar a piece. <laughs> and it's holding up everything. That's the list that I could think of off the top of my head as to what we did for the second gen. Right. And then all the parts that we got the second gen and all the parts we took off the second gen are pretty much sitting in a pile in the shop. (laughs) For the most part, yeah. That's what we did. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, The second gen is up and running. I should be able to make it to Barrett Lake, assuming I get those last two parts and get the lockers and air system up and running. But that should be no problem. I just got to find two eighth inch NPT to quarter inch barbed hose fittings. But yeah, it's all up and running. It's working. We had a few hitches along the way. Yes. <laughs> like the steering. The steering, <laughs> steering and was how about one. the um the spline counts? The spline counts on the transfer cases yeah. were uh, not compatible. The transfer <clears throat> case would not slide into position. Yeah, that was the weirdest thing. That was super weird. So I that held that. us up like almost 20 hours. <laughs> not 20, maybe 12. 12 hours. Yeah, well, we didn't... Well, tr- we, we, I mean, when it was difficult we just it was late at night and we're just like let's it, let's walk away yeah. before we get frustrated and start doing <laughs> more damage. aggressive <laughs> yeah damage to it and yeah. uh and let's figure it out in the morning yeah which is actually a really smart move it, it was it was a very smart move if you ever kind of hit that point where you're just getting frustrated and start hitting things with hammers really hard <laughs> it's probably a good idea to stop for the night and go to bed which we didn't do <laughs> no we, we kept well, hitting it with hammers and then tried to use ratchet straps, ratchet straps. <laughs> but we didn't hit it we hit it with like a dead blow dead blows yeah. we weren't hitting it with like the five pound sledge no <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the and I want to point out that that mm-hmm. was a that was a like a five thousand foot level list that you put in there because I mean we you didn't necessarily have things like bleeding the brakes and adding gear Correct. oil and all you know all these Correct. little things. It was a lot of little baby steps that <laughs> were involved. A lot of little baby yes. steps in there, um, like p- taking and putting the pinion brake on and then taking it off. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and putting the rear drive shaft on and then taking it off and putting another one on. <laughs> there was a lot of kind of little things, little hiccups that, you know, take an extra half an hour mm-hmm. when you do it. But when you combine 20 of those, <laughs> it turns right. into an extra 10 hours of work on a rig. So. so shall we start seven days ago and say, talk about where we were and what oh, we were going to be doing and the game plan. Because I think we, in the last podcast, we mm-hmm. dis- were discussing what the cha- what we were going to do with the transmissions and the TKs. Yeah, and that was, that was as of Sunday afternoon. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we could start from Monday. Okay. And um, so, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, mm-hmm. uh, we can go through that. Yeah, I think that's quick. a good idea. Let's bring people up to speed on yeah. <laughs> kind of what happened, what we did, and where we <laughs> were and and things of that nature Never so the, again so from the last Maybe podcast again. we were deciding on what we were going to be doing with the t cases yes and so what was our decision our decision was to do the swappy swap swap <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> instead of the swappy swap <laughs> and so uh what we did was we pulled uh bobcat into the shop mm-hmm. we pushed uh the second gen out of the shop and then we had to winch the second gen up onto the concrete pad in front of the shop so yeah. we could work on it because Bobcat, we took the drive shafts out of it. So, uh, Bobcat didn't have drive shafts. The second gen didn't have drive shafts. So, how do you move a rig with no drive shafts? <laughs> you know what would have been smart? <laughs> huh. Now that now, set f- you know, three days, four days later, and mm-hmm. we're thinking about this, before I fully reversed into the shop, we should have just hooked up the for uh, the second gen forerunner and just pulled it up yeah while i was reversing and i realized show. that as i was saying yeah everything too <laughs> so uh if you guys saw a story on instagram yeah. that showed a rig being winched to bobcat the second gen being winched to bobcat with no audio on it you can blame jimmy <laughs> that was my fault <laughs> I was playing with gifs and words and I turned didn't want to listen to myself repeat over and over and over on my story so mm-hmm. I turned the sound off and then 99.9% of the time I remember to turn the sound back on but that 0.1% but, of the time at that time man. <laughs> yeah I've had a, a couple people say what was up with that story I don't, I oh yeah figure that's funny because nobody said anything really <laughs> yeah not one that's funny. no comment so and it was my to, story yeah I know <laughs> so I had to give them the commentary uh, of yeah. it mm-hmm. which was you know when you have two rigs without drive shafts this is how you move them right and then me in the background going and this is how you set up recovery points with a strap <laughs> yeah so that's what that story was um mm-hmm. but anyway so we got bobcat in uh pulled the second gen winched it up onto the concrete slab that's outside the that's shop. outside the shop yeah so inside the shop we had the first gen mm-hmm. and bobcat mm-hmm. and then we put the second gen on the concrete slab that mm-hmm. was outside mm-hmm. and since we couldn't we uh, like really could only go straight back 
for the most part with the second gen. So it ha- just went off the concrete pad and <laughs> yeah. we put a big old like four by four back there to just stop it. Cause it didn't have brakes yeah. either. Cause not- we didn't, um, we didn't have anything blood. Didn't yet. have anything blood yet at that point filled up almost the shop for the most part, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Anyway. So then we got a uh, Bobcat, his drive lines pulled drive shafts mm-hmm. and the transfer case pulled. Yep. And then we realized how easy it is to do a twin stick mod to a transfer case. So we shot a video doing a twin stick mod. Yep. During shooting that video, we stripped a bolt. So we shot another video <laughs> yeah. of the gear wrench bolt biters. Which are awesome. Which are those things are freaking sweet. They are really, um, really cool. I'm gonna end up having to steal the set when you're not looking at some point. Uh, so right. that's probably gonna happen. <laughs> and it was funny because when we went to um the local auto parts store, we were mm-hmm. talking to the young lady behind the counter and she was like, I want a set of those. Yeah. And she was all stoked. She wants to do some work on her exhaust and mm-hmm. exhausts get rusted all the time and they mm-hmm. can never Ever get them off i found that out this morning yeah <laughs> and uh i was like i'll let you borrow them and i don't yeah. think she'd give them back either once i, I gave, if I gave them to her yeah you need to so, put like tracking on yeah. those uh, hidden maybe GPS i'll just trackers on see what you need like oh you need a 10 and a 12 millimeter one here you go yeah. here's those yeah <laughs> they're super easy to use a lot mm. of those uh bolt biters that you get from like say craftsman or something other you really have to hammer them on yeah in order to get them to seat properly and a lot of times you can only really go one direction, which is off, right? Mm-hmm. With the gear wrench ones, it all it takes is a super light tap. You can almost just push it on by yeah. hand. Their instructions actually say to push. Yeah. Like don't even, um, don't tap it on. And when yeah. we tapped it on just because that's, I'm so accustomed to doing that uh-huh. with the other styles. Yeah. Yeah. But they have this tapered design that's supposed to suck the, the nut or the bolts or whatever in. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sorry. Continue. Don't mind me. Keep going. <laughs> Get your head out of the gutter. Uh, so you don't actually have to tap uh, anything. So Okay. No tapping. No tapping. Just use that. Don't that, tap that. Don't tap that. Just use the gear wrench bolt biters to suck mm-hmm. the nut in yes. to the, the bolt biter. So Yeah. And then it has... <laughs> um, it has some funky design on the backside. Uh-huh. So you you can use a standard or a metric... Uh-huh. Um, box end wrench mm-hmm. on it, and it has a three eighths adapter on it, so you can use mm-hmm. a wrench or you can use a ratchet or an and, air impact or air impact. Or, yeah, they're supposedly yeah, there. T- I don't have. I we never did or tried that, no. but they do have it be or the, it is available to have um air impact, and it's supposed mm-hmm. to last ten times longer than things on the market mm-hmm. with the air, the air impact style. Yeah, I was I was very impressed with how little effort it took to for it to really grab mm-hmm. the stripped bolt head, and we were we were getting into an Allen, so it was a perfectly circular round. There was right. no corners for it to grab at all, and it notched right into the round. Mm-hmm the head of the Allen bolt super easy. And I was like, wow. So we ended up using it again on my brakes to get my, my brake yeah. bleeder off too. So, yeah, uh, it was, that was a really cool set. Check those out for sure. But, um, so we uh, did the twin stick modification, which takes like 10 minutes of yeah, bench time. It if wasn't you, hard at it all. It was not hard. We're going to have a video coming out soon. So if you want to do a twin stick mod to your Toyota transfer case, Watch for that to come out on the YouTubes. Mm-hmm. And so after we did that, we figured well, we, we did had that, we, and we did that on two transfer cases. And we did it on two transfer cases. Yeah, so we did it on the one that it will eventually go back into Bobcat. Correct. We did that, and then we figured we had lots of time left in the day. That's why we shot the extra videos. We figured we were way ahead of schedule. Right. And then we went to put RTV on the transfer case mm-hmm. that's going in the second gen. So we put the RTV on it, and then. Lifted it up with the transmission jack to slide it into place on at the end of the uh, first case underneath the second gen. And what happened there, buddy? It wouldn't go in. I hate when that happens. That's a, <laughs> is that a problem? We, uh, yeah, we, I mean, we had it on a transmission jack, so it was pretty easy to lift. It wasn't mm-hmm. very difficult. Yeah. You want to silence that thing? No, it's fine. Nobody can hear in the background. The ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I bet it's the whiskey, wine, and wheeling, guys. It's probably them or the Mike and Max off-road. Yeah, it is. <laughs> we have a group text message going on with the three podcasts, and it always gets a little out of hand. So Just getting blown up right yeah. now in the middle of our recording. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what happened with uh, our tea case? Why wouldn't it go in there? Well, that evening, we had no real idea. 
Correct. It just, we were lifting it up. It wouldn't slide in, you know, it would slide in very, very minutely. And we could tell like that pitch. it was, yeah, maybe. Yeah. And, but we could tell that it was in the splines. Mm -hmm. You know, we even second, second guessed ourselves like, wait, are these the right spline counts? And they, yeah. they, you know, we ended up pulling it out and, you know, and they were the right splines and for them, it wouldn't go in. I mean, we tried to do a ratchet strap around it mm -hmm. and tried to ratchet strap it and suck it in and it wouldn't go. And then, um, we were using the dead blow on mm -hmm. the, the output flange and hitting it and it wouldn't go in. Yeah. And we were just running into all these problems. And that's when we were like, you know what? It's, it was like nine o'clock at night. It was, it was close. It might have been nine thirty, nine nine thirty. 9 30. I yeah. lost track of time. All I remember is that the RTV had started curing. Right. And so I was like, well, it doesn't matter. Now we have to stop right. and clean all the RTV off and mm -hmm. redo the RTV if we want to keep going. And I yes. was like, that's going to take too long. Let's just call it here. We're getting frustrated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we called it that night. And then that mm -hmm. next morning, you came over and you started cleaning off the RTV. Mm -hmm. You did some, like you cleaned the threads, you cleaned the output threads. We, you know, we used a toothbrush <laughs> and like cleaned them really, really, you know, well, yeah. because we didn't want any gunk and grime in there. We didn't uh -huh. want anything, you know, like anything holding it up. Yep. And we went to put it up again. Same thing. Same thing. Exact, same, same exact thing problem. Happened. Nothing was going together. Yeah. So we eventually took it off of the transmission jack and just started bench pressing it and just shaking it around to see if we could get it. Maybe it just wasn't aligning perfectly. Right. And through shaking it around, I was like, hey, all the bolts here are moving except this one or mm -hmm. all, the, all the, the studs. Yeah. Seems like for some reason it might be bound up on this one. I don't know, but... Yeah. And you were like, what are you talking... It, should, it shouldn't be... And I was like, here... Trade me places, throw that tea case over to me here. I'll, yeah. I'll bench press it and shake it around. And then you came over and you're like, oh, yeah, that might be. I don't know. So, yeah. we so. to test it, we removed the stud. Yeah, we took that stud out. And it slid right in and it just went ploop and plopped yeah. right in. No problem. Easy, no like problems. Like it should have exactly. the first time. <laughs> exactly. And I was like, oh. So that's what it feels like to put a tea case in. Yeah. Okay. And then we kind of pulled it a little bit out mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And then I put, I double nutted the stud uh -huh. and put that in. Yeah. And it tightened the stud through the, the adapter, adapter plate. plate. Yeah. Like one click at a time again. <laughs> like I literally was yeah. had to put, I would put the wrench in, tighten it a little bit, pull the wrench off, flip the wrench 180 degrees, uh -huh. put the wrench back on, tighten it a little bit. And I had to do that all the yeah. way till that stud was tight. Yeah. And there was enough room actually to take both of the nuts off and loosen it. and then, Which was surprising. I thought yeah. that we were going to end up keeping with two nuts on yeah, that I thought stud it for the rest of its life. We would have turned it into a bolt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then we were able to get it off and then I put a washer, the lock washer, and then the, mm -hmm. the actual one nut on there. So, yeah. yeah. And tightened it all. Well, loosely tightened it all and we let mm -hmm. it sit for... Um, like three or four hours. It was about four, four and a half yeah. uh, to let the RTV cure in mm -hmm. there. So while we let it set, we did some other projects. Yep. And we started working on the electrical, the switch panel system, the switch panel block in there, which is super cool. Uh, yeah, it is. I was researching a bunch of different switch panel boxes and the one I ended up going with was a rough country. Okay. And why did you all, choose that? A couple different reasons. Uh, a was price. Yeah. It's only 200 bucks as opposed to like S, uh, switch pods and S pro S switch pros and S pods. That's what hey, it is. Yeah. Uh, they're, you know, four or $500. Right. Uh, and the rough country one, I looked it over when I got it to make sure all the connections were soldered properly, that all the wiring was done well. Mm -hmm. And it is done. It seems like it's done pretty darn well. Okay. For the price that it is. Um, yeah. That and it has rocker switches. Right. It's one of the few left with big fat rocker switches, which is what I want when I have to trigger my lockers in the middle of a trail in the middle of an obstacle if I need to. So uh, I went with that. I got the TJ version because they don't make ones that are set up for the second gen 4 runner and like any toyotas at all so i had to get the tj1 uh which mounts to the firewall in the engine bay and kind of sits and hangs the box over the engine mm -hmm. and then uh runs the wiring in through the firewall and then the it's supposed to go up through your dash and the switches are supposed to mount on top of the dash in the little tray oh, okay. that's on tj's 
That makes sense. But I don't have a tray. My dash is really curved. You don't so have a TJ. I don't have a TJ. <laughs> so that box, because it's flat, didn't sit flush on my dash anywhere. Sure. So I had to put it, flip it upside down, put it up on my headliner, and I put a, a wood flange on the back side. So it had flanged with the headliner. Mm-hmm. Ran all the wiring, took my headliner apart, my A-pillar cover, the kick panel, the glove box, the whole front of the dash off, all everything um, mm-hmm. was all torn apart to run all the wiring. And I had to completely redo the wiring harness. Yeah. Because it was the wrong length and the wrong size for the different where I needed the length of it. Yeah, they only needed you to go through the firewall and up to the top of the dash. And here <laughs> yeah. you are going up all the way to the top of the A-pillar, then mm-hmm. halfway across the roof. Yep. You know, yeah, definitely. So you had to lengthen it how much, do you think? Uh, it was about three feet. Yeah. So uh, it was it was an interesting, fun project. Uh I got to use all the up all your your solder low heat solder connectors. Oh yeah, <laughs> so I'll be restocking those. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it came out great. Uh, it's a really super clean install. I'm pretty excited about it. The whole thing has a low voltage disconnect as well. That's really cool. Which is really nice. So the, um, once your battery drops below a, a certain voltage, it'll cut off everything from the battery that you have hooked up to the switch panel. Mm -hmm. Uh, So So like if you're running a fridge in the back of the mm -hmm. truck and it's drawing, you know, uh, power, Mm -hmm. if your battery drops before to a certain level that Mm -hmm. do you set that level? Uh, Can you? Or is it preset? I haven't looked to see. It's definitely preset. I haven't looked to see if I can change it and set it to a different level. Okay. Yeah, so then it'll turn the power off to the fridge mm-hmm. so that you can still start your car. Yep, and right? the same thing, you know, if, like I'm going to have a bunch of radios hooked up to it. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, the radios will have a low voltage disconnect. So if the battery drops below a certain voltage, it'll mm-hmm. cut off the radio so I don't kill the battery. So it's a pretty cool system. I'm pretty excited to play with it and see how yeah. it turns out. No, it was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, my only gripe about it is mm-hmm. that the rocker panel switches box is humongous it is a pretty big box yeah you know and it's like i don't know it i mean i think it where you put it it's out of the way and it's Mm -hmm. not going to be a problem but i don't understand why they need such a large capacity area to for a on off switch which all it has is a wire going to it it's because it's the big rocker switches right but why does it need to be so deep it's like four inches deep because on the back of those rocker switches they go in an inch and a half and then there's another half inch of um a spade connector on the back of them so they're a good two inches deep um in there and then you have to have the wires that come off and go around in the back there too so Uh, to me that's i don't understand that seems like it's overkill it's larger than it needs to be Hmm. i don't know i mean just for a little toggle switch why does it need to be two inches deep? You know, like because it's, all it's, all it's, it's doing more is, than a toggle switch. There's a there's a light inside as well. So you have the toggle switch. They're all set up, I believe, in parallel. So you kind of have all these wires going back and forth mm-hmm. to a main wire, essentially. <laughs> That's my only gripe with it. I mean, I think the box inside the engine bay is nice and compact and tight. Mm-hmm. It looks good. Um, once we added the other bracket on it, mm-hmm. it made it uh, much more rigid and stiff, yep. um, which was nice. It was sort of just hanging out and would it was awkwardly bouncy, mm-hmm. you know, and so I just mocked up a little bracket, a little, I just bent like two bends, you yeah. know, and the, and went down to the f- um, fender and tied it into a bolt and, you know, yeah. just straightened everything out. Um, so that's nice. And then, yeah, I thought the, I mean, the overall package was pretty clean. I mm-hmm. just was like, man, that thing's ginormous <laughs> up top. So, yeah. Once it's up there from the driver's seat, it doesn't look too bad. No, I don't think it does because it's up and out of the way. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. like, you know, even in modern day cars, you know, they have all that stuff of like <laughs> li- like lights and mirrors uh-huh. and, you know, a bunch of switches sunglasses and sunglass cases, cases and yeah. all that jazz up uh-huh. top, you know, and it, you don't notice it. No. Like, I get that. But it, to me, it's like, even if that was on a TJ and on their dash, uh-huh. you know, it'd be pretty large. I don't know. I'd have to see. I don't know of any way you could make that really smaller, though. Yeah. So... <laughs> physics is not in our favor uh so yeah so we did all that that was on tuesday Mm -hmm. we got all that set up and then we put the gear oil in the transfer case so and all the seals held all the rtv Mm -hmm. held 
we put the drive shafts on or tried to put the drive shaft on and tried to put the, the pinion brake on, ran into issues with the rotor on the pinion brake hitting the floorboard because I don't have a body lift on it. So I had to take it all back off. And the rear drive shaft, the double carden, ran into the cross member up there. So we yeah. had to take that all back off and put the regular one U joint drive shaft back on. You it. know, thinking about that, <clears throat> I wonder because the first gen has a, a chunk of mm-hmm. the cross member actually cut out to fit the double carden. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what we're pro- well, that's what we're going to have to do yep. to the first gen, but. Or to the second gen, excuse me, um, which has a name, by the way. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it does not. One of our patrons, Sherpa, who is probably one of the funniest guys at an email I've ever read. Yeah, and met. he has some very entertaining emails. Yes, for sure. <laughs> uh, he he did come up with a name for the first or for the second gen. Okay, what's the name, Jimmy? It's Green Eggs and Ham. Get it. Do you Ham. want to explain why that's the name? I don't <laughs> quite. I, let, we'll it's let, green. See if the listeners understand. It's green. That. It is a green ring. I don't know where the eggs come in. I don't know where because you're is nu- either. like I don't know your nuts or you, your your head is scrambled eggs. I don't know probably. But green, the forerunner's green, so green eggs. But then ham for the ham radio. Yeah. So Ha-ha. supposedly <laughs> the forerunner's new name is green eggs and ham, but that's such a mouthful to say. Yeah. So I don't know. Green With, egg G E H. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Going but, willing and good today. <laughs> so, but the fact that you don't have a body lift on, mm-hmm. on G means <laughs> that we might have to cut more away of that cross member than what was cut on the first gen. Mm-hmm. You like almost the whole thing out. Yeah. So, we're going to have to evaluate that and see what we're going to have to do. Yeah. I do know they make different size double cardons, though. Oh. So, Did you get the little tiny double garden? I don't know. I think you might already have the smaller version because uh-huh. yours mounts up to a Toyota flange and mine mounts up to a Chevy flange. Yeah. We'll still have to look into it. I'm and not see. too concerned f- about it now. Once I break mm-hmm. that one, then I'll, I'll start being concerned about it. Yeah. Well, the unfortunate part about that is you should change it sooner than later because if you don't have a double cardon on, it sends a weird vibration down the drive shaft mm, and will yeah. loosen your pinion nut. Yeah. So, how do you, you know should, that? Uh, because that's <laughs> happened to Bobcat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to look into that. We'll see. That's on the to do list to check into. Uh, so, when we went on Tuesday to kind of get everything up and running, mm-hmm. and we put together everything the drive shafts on, and we started aligning and adjusting the steering to go take it for a test drive. And what happened uh, with the steering? We had a little bit of a hang up there. Yeah, well, we did install new rod ends because yours mm-hmm. were shot. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we put new ones on there, which is a common occurrence. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I think Bobcats are shot right now. <laughs> yeah. um, so we added new ones on there and then we tightened um, the, we had to tighten in, tow in the steering because it was way out. It like, was like three and a half inches like three, out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was massive. <laughs> and so we ended up tightening it and tightening it and tightening it. And unfortunately, what we had to do is because it had a welded on, um, hydro assist bar, we couldn't mm-hmm. just simply turn the bar. Yeah. We had to turn each one, like take it out of the steering arm uh-huh. and turn the one individually or both individually and put them back in. Yeah. Um, and, but on just making the short story shorter, it couldn't tighten it anymore. We had it completely 100% as tight as possible and we were still about an inch off. We were, we were one sixteenth towed out. That was that really? Okay. Yeah. So we were pretty so we close. we were almost even, mm-hmm. but it was still towed out is no bueno. For yeah. big tires at all. So you right. want to be one quarter to one eighth towed in um, with big tires. And so we couldn't get there. The no. The tie rod was too long. We could not suck it in far enough. That kind of put a damper on our Tuesday night. Yeah. We thought for sure we were going to have the rig up and running and I was going to get mm-hmm. to drive home Tuesday night with it. And at that point, though, we were also looking at like we were seven or eight o'clock at night yeah at that point yep. so it wasn't like there wasn't the option to go oh let's go get what we need yeah. right away you know um it was already everything was already closed mm-hmm. it was getting dark i think we were running lights outside just trying mm-hmm. to figure everything out yeah that put a damper on finishing the forerunner that day mm-hmm. and so we had to 
put our tail between our legs and admit <laughs> defeat. And as much as I didn't want to, I was yeah. trying. I was being stubborn, like no, no, we'll just run it. I'll run it. And I was, and you're like, that's not a good idea. It's not a good idea. That's yeah. not it. And I was like, okay, fine, you're right. Well, it's not only that. Like it. <laughs> I mean, it could be done. Like it. Yeah. You know, it would probably tear your tires up. And you. I mean, mm-hmm. the thing we put brand new parts in there, and it would held. It would have held. Mm-hmm. But the thing was, it was already a part. Yeah. Right. And. If for us to put the whole rig together, mm-hmm. for you to go drive, do the weekend adventure, then to come back and us tear that part of the rig apart, mm-hmm. you know, just to fix that one part just didn't make sense, you yeah. know, when you didn't really need to drive the rig home, you know, like that I evening. I know, I know. You know, so we went to bed late that evening again mm-hmm. um, and then woke up in the morning, you know, and you came over and brought breakfast and coffee. Thank you uh-huh. very much. Anytime. Um I'd buy my friends. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. We did then did we record a podcast that morning? Uh we did No, I think we recorded on Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. We or went, Monday. It was either Monday or Tuesday, whatever it was. So well, one of those days we recorded a podcast yeah. and we didn't talk about that. But uh to fix the tie rod problem, we went into town. Went into town and saw our BFFs. Over at Rough Stuff. Over at Rough Stuff, who yep. have their own podcast now. Yeah. So, definitely go check that out. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I went over and said hi to them, and we're like, hey, did you guys miss us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> haven't uh, seen you in a while. Haven't seen you in a good <laughs> week or so. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we went and said hi to those guys. Uh, we got a new uh, Dom tubing, one and a half inch by quarter wall Dom, mm-hmm. and some bungs to go in the end to fit the FJ80 rod ends. Yep. And uh, they were nice enough to cut it to the length that we needed f- uh, for us and uh, got it, went back home. I uh, went back to the shop, uh, got down to work, and Jimmy got down to work fabricating up the new tie rod, mm-hmm. and I got down to work finishing up the electrical uh, switch panel system. Right. So And not only... So, I, I welded on the tie rod ends, mm-hmm. the bungs onto it, and made sure that it was straight and that we had... Um, we were at the correct length mm-hmm. and things of that nature, you know, and it just took a little bit of a bevel and then just welded up and it was pretty simple for the most part. I also welded up the clamp for yes. the hydro assist. Um, yep. I added a nut into the threaded area mm-hmm. to make more splines because previously you had ripped out the uh, the threads out uh-huh. of one of the sides of that clamp. Uh-huh. And so by adding a nut, pretty much I gave us like th- half to three quarters of an inch of more threads, more contact yeah. um, into the clamp. So yeah. it can hopefully it'll hold stronger mm-hmm. than it has in the past. So yeah, it should. I need to um, take that out and put some Loctite on it. Mm-hmm. At some point this weekend. Well, you should probably get a longer bolt, too. And a longer bolt, Because yeah. it was made to only go in, what, <laughs> a, like a quarter inch, and now I added, uh, like, three quarters of an inch to that, well, so you if, got an inch of contact. Yeah. I mean, the we have a lot more contact now, so I don't know if we necessarily need a longer bolt. I would not mind having a longer bolt, but... The only benefit to having the longer bolt would be a little bit more contact mm-hmm. on the threads. I think we're going to have enough just find the way it is. Okay. Um, but the the spacer that was on the bottom side of the heim mm-hmm. is the only part missing. But the nut we put on there... Allows for the movement. Allows for the movement like a spacer would on the heim. So, But do you think the bolt goes all the way through the nut that we welded on and into the yes. actual clamp. Okay, yeah. then you're that's fine. Because the bolt the the nut we welded on there is essentially the same height as the spacer was. Okay. So, well then that's yeah. fine. I, I I was assuming that it wasn't getting down into the clamp. Uh, that it was okay. just going down it was into just the, on nut. the nut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's all the way down into the clamp at least a few threads into the clamp. Okay. So, so that was we had to take the clamp off of the first gen mm-hmm. and move that over as well. And while we did that, we were mm-hmm. you were also swapping out the pumps or the uh, the hydro the, rams. The rams, yeah. So, oh, funny story about that because after when you, we were doing um uh, bleeding the steering, Mm-hmm. The ram was going in the opposite direction of the way we were turning, right? Yes. And so we swapped the lines okay. on the ram. And I remember remember I said, no, I took them off and I, I put them on the exact same ports. Yeah. We were like, well, maybe this ram is reversed for some reason. Yeah. And, okay. Um, because when we turned it left, the ram went right. And yes. When we turned it right, the ram went left. Mm-hmm. So uh, after you left... 
and I was bleeding it a little bit more and kind of finishing that up, uh, I started the engine. Yeah. And with the power steering pump on, the when the ram turned right, or when I turned right, the ram went left after oh. I swapped them. So apparently, if the engine is not on, your ram is going to behave different opposite from when your engine is on interesting but that wasn't the case when we did the first gen the first time yeah i don't know that's bizarre so it was it was very bizarre um but yeah i tried <laughs> after swapping those i yeah. turned it on i turned left and the whole system went uh-huh. <laughs> jammed up and moved <laughs> the ram a little bit moved the clamp a little bit on the the rod and i was like oh okay so i had to swap those back <laughs> oh bummer <laughs> but uh, that's interesting i wonder i've never experience that i, I just went I, when i was looking underneath the rig and we were just cycling the steering it, you know they're going in opposite directions and i was mm-hmm. like what the heck yeah yeah i don't know i've never experienced that either so uh yeah i got it all buttoned up and uh tightened everything down mm-hmm. the well let me see tuesday so this is wednesday um putting all that together and then you had to go and i spent an extra hour at the mm-hmm. shop um kind of buttoning things down making th- sure things were torqued yep. and then yeah. i drove home yeah. And yeah. how did the drive go? Uh, interesting. Uh, loud because I don't have boots on the twin sticks. So there's just a okay. hole in the floorboard. Yeah. So it's loud coming up through there. Uh, I forgot to delete the muffler. So right. I was a little so worried. So why, why did we delete the muffler? Because the muffler and the, the out of the exhaust mm-hmm. dumped like two inches from my rear shock literally straight on to the <laughs> straight shock. into the shock and i was like, like it doesn't turn down good. it doesn't no. <laughs> turn right or left it literally right onto the shock yes so i was like that's not good no. but i forgot to delete it before driving home and i realized it halfway home and i was like oh yeah well i hope this doesn't blow out my shock <laughs> going <laughs> driving home uh, i tested this morning didn't blow it out which is nice um but i immediately first thing i did this morning was i deleted from the cat back yeah um, okay so did you turn it on yeah how loud is it it's not too bad actually it's not really? as loud as the first gen was oh wow is yeah. okay and then so i did that i had to tighten down the drag link and torqued down the wheels mm-hmm. before i drove it home and then on the way home it was loud and i had a really bad death wobble 40 to 45 miles an hour oh really which I had a little bit on the first gen, mm-hmm. um, but when I put the hydro assist on the first gen, it like got rid of it. Right. And so, it the hydro assist on the second gen does not get rid of the death wobble. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> and it's okay. pretty it's pretty violent, 40 to 45 miles an hour. And since it, I, use, I was thinking with the first gen that it was something to do with the suspension mm-hmm. or the steering. Right. But I, we have all new steering, all new steering ends. Yeah. Um, the suspension is different and I'm still getting a death wobble and it's not the balance of the wheels and tires because I swapped the tires around and they're still, uh, still there. And you have the bead, the BBs in there Mm, and stuff. I got the balancing beads in them. So it's kind of like, I'm not sure what's causing it. I, I, there could be a few different things from a trunnion bearing to a burr field to the bad caliper that's causing it. I don't know. We'll have to dig into that. Investigate it. If anybody has any good tips on trying figuring out how to remove death wobble, please let us know. Yeah. Um, but beyond 45 miles an hour, runs awesome. <laughs> Smooth nice. as can be. So you just got to go from 40 to 45 as fast as you can. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just speed up through that. And hopefully there's no corner. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, other than that, it's driving well. It's all good to go except for the lockers. I just got to finish up the lockers and then I'll be able to go uh, wheeling this weekend. Nice. So, Yeah. That's where the Forerunner's at, and that's everything we've done and the story of putting it all together Yeah, for seven days. Now, so now we have a first gen to put together. We have... Well, we're going to put Bobcat together first. Okay. We've got so, Bobcat to put together, mm-hmm. and I am taking the R151 mm-hmm. out of the first gen mm-hmm. and the TKs out of the mm-hmm. first gen and putting... Well, and the 471 out of the first gen, uh-huh. technically, even though it's not on the first gen right now. Yeah. And those are going to go into Bobcat. Yep. Um, we also got new rear leaf springs uh-huh. for Bobcat. The same ones that are the Procomp 5-inch uh, Chevy 63s. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got an Adelief on it. It's got a uh, 
Overload. Ang- overload. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the Adelief. Okay. The angle, what I forgot, the, the shim, the shim mm-hmm. an angled shim for to adjust, uh, you know, the axle. To caster. Caster, thank you again. Um, and I'm going to take that off. I'm going to take the overload spring off, and I'm probably going to pull a leaf spring out of it. It's a four-pack, and yeah. I'm going to probably go down to a three-pack. Okay. Because um, yeah, you're super lightweight in the end, so you don't need... Yeah. All that. I don't have that the weight. Um, I want to try to break it in. I also want to, I don't want to lift it five inches. Mm-hmm. And so I'm hopefully that removing all these additional things that I'll lift it four, three to four inches. Yeah. Um, and then that will hopefully level Bobcat out a lot yeah. and, or help it out a lot and level it because that will, I mean, I think the Chevy 63s that I have under there now, which are great spring or well, which are a great length of spring. I think these are just clapped out and I think they're just done. Yeah. Um, you know, they they flex a lot and uh, they flex, <laughs> they, all, invert. they invert, <laughs> they you know, and so, S's. yeah, they're just done. <laughs> um, and so, I'm hoping that'll solve that. And then we've got to put the f- um, first gen together. Yep. So, it took us seven days to get everything apart and build the first gen, or the second gen, uh-huh. green eggs and ham. And then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we've got to put Bobcat and the first gen back together. Yep. And then we've got a massive clean project in the shop. We have a big cleaning and organization <laughs> project to do in the shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then after that, we get to hopefully maybe start working on Samantha. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. So. Yeah, I've got a few little projects. I don't know. You know, like it'll probably be Samantha Bobcat, Samantha Bobcat for a mm-hmm. little bit. Um. And then throw Charlotte in the mix there. I have like 10 projects on for Charlotte, mm-hmm. small little uh, projects for yeah. Charlotte yeah. Um, lined up. And I got hit up by Laminex today saying, nice. hey, we're just coming out with this new project for third gens. Do you want it? And I said, I told him, I was like, yeah, I'd love to do it. I just want to let you know that I'm probably a month out on any video right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, no problem. Let us know when you get within a week and we'll send it to you. Nice. <laughs> and so, unfortunately, I've got a backlog of like things that I need to get done yeah. and videos that need to get are edited right now. I mean, I if you think about it, in the last seven days, we shot one, two, three, four, five, six videos, five videos. I was counting four, but yeah. Four. Okay. In the last seven days, we shot at four to six videos. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> got to get those out. You got to mm-hmm. get the Bear Lake video out. Mm-hmm. There's Hell Hole. Hell Hole. You got to get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got, uh, and then there's, I don't know, there's um, a sticker removal video. There's, um, I've got, there's an, I don't know, there's a few other videos on that list. I can't remember. I'm trying to look over at my computer, but it's not pulling. It's not lined up right now for it. <laughs> um, uh, and then, geez, man. I've got, I have probably five or six things on the shelf yeah. sitting, waiting to get installed. Yep. So, yeah, we're going to be busy here at the Snail Trail Shop over yes. the next, like, um, two months, <laughs> three months. If not, yeah. <laughs> uh, it'll be good. That just means more content for all you guys out there. There so you go. Definitely. That'll be a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that kind of, we have eaten up a huge chunk of this episode, just getting you guys up to date on everything that went on with the Forerunner and where we're at. Um, we have a couple big kind of things coming up here. We're reaching the end of September, so make sure you get in on the giveaway if you want to. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have a special guest on October 3rd, uh, which we will also be at, um, what are we announcing? The gift boxes. Gift boxes. October 3rd. And, well, and the winner of the drawing. And the winner of the drawing. So October 3rd is going to be a fun episode. Make sure you check in for that in a couple of days here. Yep. So uh, if you guys need to get a hold of us, Jimmy at snailtrail4x4.com. Tyler at snailtrail4x4.com. Uh, you can reach us through YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, the website. Probably shoot up a bat signal in the sky and one of us will answer. That works too. So, <laughs> um, yeah. I think I'd be to- like, oh, cool, Batman. I know. <laughs> Jimmy's going to be looking around. Who's calling Batman? Uh, yeah. So, anyways, yeah, get a hold of us if get a hold of us if you guys have questions. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions regarding engine questions yeah. for my buddy. So, if you have any other engine questions, send those in as well. I am compiling the list there. I think that's it as for reminders. And so, yeah, good. Excited. Any last words you want to add for everybody? I'm excited to hear what you think of the differences between the second gen and the second gen. (laughs) And with that, my friends, keep crawling.